Sultan, what has an 87-year-old financier and philanthropist who's poured money into this country for more than 30 years done to deserve this new attack? Well, we don't talk about an attack here. We talk about uh, making uh, public, uh, as public as possible, the plans uh, he's been uh, outlaying for the past uh, couple of years for the leaders of the European Union. Uh, Mr. Schorz made himself a political actor for the past couple of years, announcing publicly that he wants to be a political actor in this country. Uh, without the, uh, the democratic mandate, we presume should be there for him. So if uh, he wanted to become a political actor, uh, here we go. We, let's talk about politics. But there is no Soros plan, is there? You've taken three sentences from his newspaper articles made over two years out of context, and you're trying to frighten Hungarian voters with them, presumably in order to win the next elections. Well, we all know, even by the, uh, his own words, that there is a plan like that. Mr. Soros has been uh, announcing, writing about his ideas, his plans about solving uh, handling uh, the migration crisis in various forms and we see that resonating through uh, European institutions and this is really concerning. But to suggest a plan in the way that you have in this national consultation, surely that suggests some kind of conspiracy against Hungary led by Mr. Soros. That's rubbish, isn't it? <laughs> well, uh, suggestions uh, come together uh, as a plan and can be implemented if there's influence. And we all know that Mr. Schorsch has influence among the European leaders. Uh, Mr. Schorsch has an influence through his uh, institutional framework, network, his financing. And indeed, uh, his ideas are spreading around uh, Europe, around the globe as a matter of fact, um, coming into reality at some times. So that's what, I'm, uh, what we are trying to fight against. You could have chosen other sentences from his newspaper articles. Compulsory refugee quotas won't work. Sounds familiar, you said it. The EU must regain control of its borders. Sounds familiar, you said it. Spur job creation in the Middle East and Africa so people can stay at home. Sounds familiar, yes, you said that as well. It sounds to me like Mr. Shodosh could be your friend rather than your enemy. You mentioned only a couple of uh, issues in which there might be some resonance, actually, of what we've been saying. Still, the content is going to be different. Uh, we talk about the differences because what we see coming through the European institutional framework system is uh, the different, uh, in our perception, dangerous and uh, non-Hungarian interest uh, perceptions of what shall be done in face of the migration crisis. The government clearly knows its position. You clearly have the support of many Hungarians. Why waste more public money on yet another national consultation to ask the public what they think, on the one hand, some people interpret that as to tell them what they ought to think. I don't believe uh, uh, that in politics uh, you can stop and rest uh, when it's about uh, looking for the topics uh, and looking for the reinforcement that is required, that is important for a politician. Mr. Soros's proposals and plans are coming through the European institutional system. Um, Wait and see, uh, you're going to see that this is true. And that's why we need a reinforcement uh, and um, clear guidelines on behalf of the Hungarian population. Uh, national consultations have been popular for the past couple of years. It's, uh, they've, they've proved to be good uh, opportunities and means for keep, keeping in touch with reality, what the Hungarians think uh, on certain issues. But it's not a consultation, is it? You're not asking people what they think you as politicians are telling them what you want them to think. You're trying to get reassurance for your own political agenda. Well, that's your interpretation. Our interpretation is that we tell them what we think about uh, reality, what we think about dangers ahead of us, and we ask their opinion. I put it to you that instead of a Soros plan, there's rather a Hungarian government plan uh, to violate international refugee law and to in dereliction of EU values, the organisation which you've signed up to. I'm sorry, but this is nonsense. In Urchain, a village in Tolna County, the owner of a small hotel had his tyres slashed and was physically threatened to the extent he had to leave the village because uh, refugees, people who'd been granted international protection by the Hungarian state, um, he invited those people to stay in his small hotel and the public turned against him uh, turned against this plan, his intention to house people who'd already been granted protection by your government or by this state, in the name of, there's a Soros plan. 
well, it's the people of Urchin who have to decide what they want in their village, in their community to happen, and it's not us. That's what uh, the very clear line of the Hungarian government has always been. But they quote the Soros plan, which you appear to have invented to, to frighten people like that. You've been very successful, haven't you? You've heard some arguments like that and you jump on it, that's, uh, that's certainly true. But keep in mind that uh, Hungarians have been clear and very explicit about illegal migration and accepting migrants in this country. Uh, for obvious reasons, uh, they've seen over 400,000 people crossing the borders and going through the country back in 2015 without discipline, without our consent. Um, so for obvious reasons, the Hungarians don't like what is happening at the borders of the European Union. Shouldn't you be telling the people of Urchin and the people of Hungary, wait a minute, these are not illegal migrants. These are people, some of the 618 people that the Hungarian state has recognized in need of and worthy of international protection this year. Well, we've, we see BBC and others trying to portray the Hungarian government in that light. But again, we are explicit about what is happening at the borders of the European Union. We've been trying and we've been reaching out to, uh, to those who are in real need. Every year, hundreds of them are being taken to Hungary and we take care of them. Uh, still, uh, the Hungarians feel that the illegal migration is a real problem. Indeed, they feel that illegal migration is a security problem. And indeed, sometimes they give a voice to what they believe in. And that, I believe, is a democratic right. In your reply to the Financial Times leader column, you write, Hungary has demonstrated solidarity with our European allies by protecting our common border, upholding our treaty obligations out of respect for the rule of law in the spirit of European values. If one looks up European values, one comes immediately on the internet to the Berlin Declaration on the 50th anniversary of the Treaty of Rome, which says, we stand up for liberties and civil rights also in the struggle against those who oppose them. Racism and xenophobia must never again be given any reign. European values? Yes, we have signed that and uh, we fully agree. What's the question? The question is, surely your policies towards refugees in this country are both racist and xenophobic? That's a statement from BBC or that's a question? It's a question. No, it's rather sounded as a, as a statement. We fully disagree. Zoltan Kovac, thank you very much.